When you did awesome things for which we did not look, you came down, the mountain shook at your presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. Jericho's were here Sunday, Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. And they just did a super job, especially that last night. That guy preached the gospel, didn't he? The crowds were outstanding. He just did a great job. We enjoyed having the Jericho so much. And you would think I'd be back behind the pulpit this morning, but I'm not. I have a guest speaker with us this morning. I asked him to come. He didn't ask me to come. I booked him about a month ago. At that time, Brenda and I was so thrilled with what God was doing in our lives, excited. He called and told me that he had just gotten back from that great revival in London, England. And on the telephone, his excitement was contagious and the power of God was so powerful, I felt just waves of the glory going over me while I talked to him. And I said, man, you've got to come to Brownsville and preach. He said, well, I don't know when I can. He said, the only time I got is Father's Day. I said, well, I'll miss the pulpit again, but it's important enough for me to, for you to come. And folks, this morning, I'm introducing to you a young man that's not a stranger to any of us. He's probably got more of a heart for God than most people that I know in the ministry. He's a very humble young man, but he's full of the power of God. Always has been ever since I've known him. I remember when we laid hands on him and sent him to the mission field in Argentina. It was a great district council meeting when we laid hands on him, and God miraculously opened doors for he and his wife, Jerry, to go and work in that revival in Argentina. Since that time, he's been around the world several times. God is using him mighty, mightily, and he's here with us this morning. He's going to share with us what God is doing, and I want you to give him your best ear. Don't tune this man out because he's telling something that I feel like every Christian needs to hear. Would you give a warm welcome to Steve Hill? Bless the Lord. I am a happy father. I had a, uh, a birth in our family two weeks ago. Got a little girl. And those of you who are um, praying, you haven't had children. My wife and I have been married for 16 years. And we're one of those cases that the doctor said it won't happen. She has had cancer. She's had uh, uh, three or four surgeries. She's had half of her female organs removed, and, and the, she's had uh, tubal pregnancies. She was pregnant with twins in Argentina, and one of them went undetected and almost exploded in her, in her uh, uterus, and it, it was just an incredible miracle that God brought us through, and we gave up. Has anyone ever given up? We gave up, but I think that's where God takes over when we give up. And we basically, we, get, we adopted two children in Argentina. We were happy with our little family and uh, believing the Lord had finished as far as children were concerned. And lo and behold, we went to Russia to plant a church. And I think it was a couple days after my wife got back, she got pregnant. So I think something happened in Russia in her spirit. I don't know what it is, but ladies, if, you're, if you want to get pregnant, take your husband to Russia and just spend a little time over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was she was just so happy to get back. I don't, I don't know, but we have a beautiful baby girl. And yes, I am going to show you a picture because it's Father's Day and I can do this. Okay, and I know you can't see it, but that's okay. I'm doing it anyway. It's going on record. <laughs> Little Kelsey Noel was born uh, a couple weeks ago. I appreciate the opportunity to come today and... Um, my heart is full. I, have, I want to begin today's meetings by saying to you that I have never in my life seen what we are seeing now in our ministry. And I, you're listening to a young man who went through seven years of the Argentine revival, and if you know anything about the Argentine revival, you know you've seen it all. We have witnessed the lame walk, the blind open their eyes. We have witnessed people with cavities filled in the meetings. 
We have seen things. We've had secular dentists come to the meetings and look and watch the handiwork of God because they knew these people. And the people would go out to the meetings with cavities and come back and they would be filled. There's so many documented cases that it's, uh, it's put to rest all the skepticism, so many secular documented cases. So we've seen all of that. And that's good. It's good to see the wonders of the Lord. But something more has happened. How many believe there is more? If you don't believe there is more, then you got a boring God because my God is bigger than all this. And uh, I am believing the Lord for great miracles. How many believe the Lord can take us by surprise? How many have been taken by surprise before? I have been taken by surprise, friends, and I'm going to share with you uh, this morning what took place on January the 19th of this year. Now, this is fresh bread. God does not serve stale bread. This is fresh bread. And we have seen more miracles in the last six months than I have seen in the last 15 years. I have seen more people filled with the Holy Spirit in the last six months than I have in the last 15 years. I have seen more people moved upon by the power of God. I've seen the lukewarm become white hot. I have seen the dead spiritually raised to life. I have had so many pastors come up to me and say, never in my born days have I seen anything like this. I've had old saints of the church come up to me and go, bless God, this is Pentecost. <laughs> this is what I remember. I remember one lady who was uh, the housekeeper of Jack Coe, the evangelist Jack Coe, he was, she was with us up in Wisconsin, sitting right on the front row. And uh, this lady's up in her 80s. She was every night, man, we were there till 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. People, people in the church couldn't move at 1 o'clock in the morning. They couldn't get up. There's power of God had hit them so hard. And, and um, she came up to me and said, I haven't seen anything like this since my time with Jack Coe. And it's not Steve. It's the Holy Ghost. And I want to share with you just for a few minutes today, friends, what the Lord is doing around the world. And I want to share with you how I received. Now, I shared with a few of the leaders a few minutes ago that this old boy right here almost missed what God had planned for him. And that is a dangerous, dangerous place to be, friends, where you can almost miss. And I have wept and wept and wept and said to Jesus, I came this close to missing what you were doing because of my analytical mind because of my criticisms, because of my years of Christianity. You know, we build around us, without even knowing it, friends, we build around us walls, and it's hard for God to penetrate those walls. I'm speaking from my heart this morning. I'm not going to huff and puff and scream. I might tonight. But this morning, I just want to share from my heart what the Lord has done. Is that okay? I want you to understand that I'm coming to you today with an incredible excitement. The Lord spoke to me about this service on Wednesday around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I was in my backyard, and he came upon me, and he said, everyone in the service on Sunday, every single person there that is dry will be drenched with a heavenly rain. Now, if you're dry, some of you may know what it's like to be dry. I know what it's like to be dry. I know what it's like to be stale. I know what it's like to be cold. And I know what it's like to be soaking wet. I know what it's like to be white hot. Friends, I'll take that over the other. I'll take that over the other. So this, this morning's service, I'm going to share with you for a few minutes. I'm praying that, as the pastor said, you just have ears to hear. That is one of the prerequisites to receiving anything from God, is that you have ears to hear. The woman with the issue of blood, when they, she heard about Jesus, after all the operations she had had, after all the doctors who had seen her, she was at the end of her rope. Remember what she did? She got up and she went. And that's a lot of us are at that point right now. We're saying, God, can you do anything in my life? If you're real, reveal yourself to me. And friends, I want to tell you, he is doing that in our meetings around the world. I want you to bow your heads and pray a simple prayer with me this morning. If you're listening over the air, I want you also just to bow your head. If you're in your home, wherever you might be, a hotel room, just pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, everyone out loud. Dear Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. In your precious name. 
Amen. I am becoming more of a simple person. I have uh, been raised under some of the greatest greats, I believe, in Christendom, Leonard Ravenhill, who was a great man of God. When I was with you last time, I shared quite a bit from Leonard's ministry, what God has done through our lives through him. Since that time, Leonard has gone on to be with the Lord. He went on in December to be with Jesus. And uh, he did hear about my little baby girl. He was in a coma. And I went up to Leonard and I said, Len, uh, Shel, uh, we're, we're going to have a baby. Jerry's pregnant. And uh, he squeezed my hand. So if anybody ever tells me, you know, that people don't understand in a coma, I want to tell you, this guy squeezed my hand and was rejoicing that my wife was going to have a child. And then we've also been raised under the ministry of David Wilkerson. Uh, I had the opportunity to work under Carlos Anacondi in Argentina, the great, the great businessman who's led one million people to the Lord. Anyone in this room led one million people to the Lord? Are you here? Anybody? This businessman has led one million people to the Lord, and you can learn from somebody like that. How many believe you could learn from somebody like that? He owns a nuts and bolts factory, and God told him to preach one day, and has since that time used him. Now he's all over the world holding the largest campaigns in the history of Japan, Sweden. And so I've been around some wonderful, wonderful people. And I've heard a lot of techniques. I've heard a lot of methods. I've, I've, I've seen everything a man could see when it comes to ministry techniques uh, and, and ways to hold a service. And you know what the Lord has been doing, friends? He has taken, since January the 19th, He has taken all that and thrown it out the window. And He has said to me, Pastor, He has said, Steve, you're going to learn something and you're going to learn it or nothing's going to happen. I am spontaneous. I can do anything I want to do, when I want to do it, the way I want to do it. So let me explain something to you, friends. We're going to be praying with people today and tonight and whatever else the Lord wants to do. We're going to be praying for people. And you may be on this side of the church and you want God to come upon you. Some of you have been praying to be filled with the Holy Ghost. A lawyer got hit in Saraland, Alabama the other day been seeking the baptism for 15 years, was cold as ice for 49 years. He's been cold as ice. But he just gave up. Have you ever given up? He came forward right here, and the power of God hit him in a way that we have, many of us have seldom seen. He needed it. <laughs> he needed it. He's an analytical man, one of the top lawyers in southern Alabama. power of God moved on him for about a half hour, and then he got up, shaking under the power, crawled across the platform, wiggled up to me, and I didn't know who the man was. The church had gone berserk, had gone wild because everybody knew him. He, he grabbed a hold of me and he said, touch me again. <laughs> and I prayed for him one more time, and tongues just... Whoosh, he began speaking in tongues, and he went on television with this testimony that you're looking at a man who was involuntarily filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he didn't... He didn't know what was going on, friends, all it, but he has been transformed by the power of God. So I said that to say this. We may be praying for folks right here, and the Lord may speak to me about praying for someone right here. So if I'm right next to you, and you're going, finally, and I'm praying for someone right to your right, and then I race over to the other side of the church, it's because the Lord told me to do that. Okay? Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. I'll share more with you about that later on. Can you drink the water here, brother? <laughs> That's what you always say to me on the mission field. This is yours, isn't it? It's all right. Whatever you got, I got. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But I am so excited, friends. I know what's going to happen in today's service. I know what's going to happen. Can I say that again? I know what's going to happen. First of all, I'm going to get a glass of fresh water. Thank you, brother. I would like for Renee, if you would, come to the piano and just be ready to... Um... Well, I'm having a hard time, friends, holding everything. You know, it, I'm, so, I'm so excited. And my wife has, is having the time of her life. Brenda, she's, she's beside herself with her husband. She's been to church services with us and uh, just watched all heaven come down. And um, sometimes I just want to get in there and just um, begin praying with people, but the Lord is sh sharing me. I have got to preach the Word. I believe in the Word of God. 
I want to share with you this morning, Renee, you making your way up? Good. I want you to turn with me to Psalm 77. How many are hungry for more of Jesus? Yes. Friends, I want to tell you, we better be. Someone asked Charles Spurgeon, most of you should know who he was, why he had to be continually filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, how many believe you need more and more and more? And they asked Charles Spurgeon, why do you have to continually be filled with the Holy Ghost? You know what he said? Because I leak. That's one of the secrets to his ministry, by the way, friends. He was a, 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 a man who could speak in the language of the, the layman because I leak. Anybody understand what it means to get filled with the Holy Ghost on a Sunday and all hell breaks out on Monday, and by Monday night you feel drained? Well, what you need is more of Jesus. What you need is more of the Lord. Psalm 77. We're going to do a spiritual exercise this morning that will be healthy to all of us on Father's Day. We're going to remember the deeds of our Father. We're going to remember the deeds of the Lord. Psalm 77, 11 reads like this. I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate on all thy work and muse on thy deeds. I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. Now there's power in that, friends. How many here have had a conversion experience? You have been saved. How many since that conversion experience have had, have had traumas, difficult times in your life? Well, some of us have forgotten what it was like to receive a powerful miracle from the Lord. And I'm sharing this, friends, for a purpose. Because we forget what the Lord can do. And some of us today, this may be Father's Day. This may be Father's Day, but friends, the Lord's going somewhere today, and I'm going with him. And we're going to look back. Some of you are going to say, well, I remember Father's Day of 1993, and I remember 1994, but let me talk to you about 1995. I'll never forget that Sunday. I'll never forget what happened to me on that Sunday. We will remember the deeds of the Lord. Now, I'm a father. And I have children. My little boy is seven. And how many have experienced this with your kids? You buy them toys. You buy them stuff. You buy them all kinds of nifty little goodies. And then they, you're at Toys R, or Toys R Us with them or driving by. And they go, Daddy, take me to Toys R Us. And you go, no, we can't do that right now. And they go, you never take me to... Anybody ever heard that? You never do anything for me. Well, my little boy did that one day to me. And I marched him right into his toy box. I said, open that lid, boy. I said, look at that. That's a remote control car. It may be busted right now, boy, but about three months ago, I bought that for you. You remember? And we start going back down the roads of his life, and he sees, yeah, Daddy's been good. Daddy's been good, and our Father has been good to us. He has been good to us, friends, and we need to remember the wonders of the Lord. We need to look back and see how the Lord has moved. Look at this church. Lord, have mercy. Has he moved at Brownsville or not? He has been good to this church. He's been good to us. So let's look at the wonders of the Lord. I'm going somewhere this morning, friends, because I'm going to lead you up to January 19th. Now, since 19th of January, my life has been a blur, okay? I've been passing myself in the air because every meeting we go into turns out to be an extended revival meeting or some type of a Holy Ghost uh, outpouring and, and it's been a blur. This whole year has been a blur to me. It's a wonderful blur. It's an exciting time to be alive and I'm leading up to this and remembering, that's what I'm doing right now, friends, is remembering the wonders of the Lord. Some of you listening at home have had God do great things in your life, but you've forgotten. And you'd say to us today, I don't even believe in God. Well, friend, I want to tell you, you're breathing. And that's the wonder of the Lord right there. God gave you life. I will remember the wonders of the Lord. Let's look at some of the areas that God has brought us through. Do you remember what it was like, friends, to live in sin? Anybody with me? Do you remember what it was like to wake up in the morning with no peace? 
It's David, right? The father of the year. Do you remember what that was like? To wake up and not know the Lord. I do. I was a drug addict for years. I lived on the streets of America. I knew what it was like to wake up in the morning going through withdrawal symptoms. I knew what it was like to wake up wondering what I did the night before. I knew what it was like to get my paycheck on Friday and on Saturday be broke. And I also remember, friends, on October 28, 1975, at 11 o'clock in the morning, when Jesus Christ got a hold of me. I will never forget the day a Lutheran vicar came into my room. I was going through withdrawals. He came into my room and grabbed my hand, and he said this. He said, Steve, I can't help you, but I know somebody who can. His name is Jesus, and he can heal you. He can set you free, Steve. I remember looking up at that man like he was crazy. So you got to be kidding. Look at me, man. I've been on drugs for 12 years. I'm a junkie. I'm a mainliner. I'm a thief. He said, God could deliver you, son. He said, pray with me. And I said, I don't know how to pray, and I don't believe in God. He said, that's okay. Say this name. He said, say the name Jesus. Friends, how many know that there's power in the name of Jesus? You can talk all day about religion, friends, but when you say the name Jesus, the demons tremble. The devil tremble. He knows that name. And I remember laying on my bed, and I looked up in the sky, and that man put that, I call that on moron status, okay? Moron level. When he said, just say the name Jesus. Anybody can say the name Jesus. He didn't say, here are the four spiritual laws. You need to understand them, Steve, and then I'll lead you to Christ. No, he said... Say the name Jesus. And I'll never forget squeezing his hand. I'm remembering the wonders of the Lord, friends. I looked up at the ceiling of the room, and in unbelief, I said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, and I began saying it louder and louder and with more conviction. And the more I said his name, the more power swept through my body. And I went, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And in 30 seconds, friends, I was a brand new person. I will remember. I will remember the wonders of the Lord. Think about the time you were delivered. Remember what it was like carrying the burden of sin. It could have been at a camp meeting. It could have been here at Brownsville with Pastor Kilpatrick preaching a, a godly message. But you wept your way to the altar. It could have been in a youth meeting with Brother Richard sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you wept right here. Remember the wonders of the Lord. How about the time, friends? Now, that was your salvation experience. How about the time when he delivered you from that difficult situation? We forget, friends. You know what these are? These are landmarks. You ever gone down the road and seen a spirit, seen a landmark? Said it says spiritual. Well, it says a historical marker, one mile. That's what these are. I'm putting up landmarks in our lives, and some of us, friend, what we need to do is go back down the roads of our lives, and we need to look, fathers. Mothers, everyone in this room, look at the times that the Lord brought us through. We're going to go back to our salvation experience. And you know what you're going to see there? A rusted old marker grown over with weeds. Why? Because you haven't done what this psalmist said to do. He said, I will remember the wonders of the Lord. I will meditate on all you've done, Lord. I will muse. Musing is a spiritual exercise of reliving the experience. That's why I share the gospel all the time and share my testimony, brother, because I relive what it was like to be on drugs. I can get, that's why I go into high schools all the time. They tell me to go in and speak, speak about what God has done in my life. And I go into these secular schools and relive what it was like to be consumed with drugs and then be set free. Remember what the Lord has done, friends. And how about that difficult situation? Remember the time, friend, where you were broke? Remember the time, David, where you didn't have a job? Remember the time, friends, where you didn't have anywhere to go? Remember the time where your, your family was falling apart or this or that was taking place? Remember the time you were sick and the Lord brought you out? How many would testify by an upraised hand, God has performed some miracles in my life? We're not stopping. We're heading somewhere this morning, friends. 
I am not going to be, I'm not going to live in the church of yesterday. I believe in this spiritual exercise. I can see what the Lord has done. I go back down the roads of my life and see the miracles, and it gives me strength to face the problems I'm facing now. But some of us, friends, we are closed to the Lord doing something new. I'm sharing this for a reason, because this old boy has had miracles take place in his life. I've been healed. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I've seen all heaven come down in our meetings. We had one church go from two, we started in Argentina, went from two to 7,000 just overnight. I've seen church growth, phenomenal church growth. I've watched all these things, th things take place, but did you know that you can watch a man raised from the dead and still be unaffected? You better believe it. Matter of fact, you can get around so many miracles, you become calloused. Those of you that want revival, you want to see all the miracles, careful, careful. Careful, careful. We can, be, we can be pulled in, sucked into a trap, friends, to where that just becomes another thing in our lives. Oh, that's just another miracle. That's wonderful, sister. That's wonderful, brother. Well, after going, my, my wife and I got married. At David, we, we went to David Wilkerson's school out in Texas. That's where we met back in 1977. She had experienced a miracle. Those of you that know my wife, she's a product of a street rape. Her mother was raped, and my wife was born out of that rape. We know what it means to go through hard times, friends. She, she was beaten through her childhood by a stepfather. There's four different fathers in her family. God brought her together with me. We worked in the church world for a, three, a few years and went on down to Argentina and saw the great Argentine revival. I am remembering the wonders of the Lord, friends. I shared with you my conversion some of the miracles we've seen. And in the Argentine revival, friend, you name it, we've seen it. Everything but being raised from the dead. And I know I saw two or three things that were that. But I'm not, you know, I have never seen a man at a funeral in a coffin with the thing shut jump out. But I've seen some folks where the doctor said he was dead and he's come back to life. We saw that for seven years. Came back from Argentina. And Renee, if you would just play the 51 in the hymn book just softly in the background, went to Spain to plant a church. If you'll read Charisma Magazine, J January of 92, I, th I shared this with the church before when I was with you last time. There's an article there called The Holy Spirit Around the World. And it shares about the Holy Ghost falling in Spain in our ministry. It was sovereign. It was awesome, friends. I have seen God fall in city parks and melt sinners that were a, a quarter of a mile away from our meetings. Melt them in the, in the benches where they were sitting. They didn't even know what was happening, but they were just melting in the presence of the Lord. I've seen these things. But little did I know that this old boy had become cold to anything new from God. I'm remembering the wonders of the Lord. Have you ever been in a place where you're going, God, I just want something to happen. I want to feel Pentecost. I want something to happen in my life, Lord, that will change me forever. I'm talking about Christians. I want my shadow to heal the sick. I want to see things happen, Jesus. The devil will come up and say, but you've seen things happen, Steve. Boy, he's like that, isn't he? You've seen plenty. Why are you going after for more? I want to share with your friends in a nutshell this morning what took place. She's playing the song, Holy, Holy, Holy. This was Leonard Ravenhill's favorite song I marvel at the holiness and the wonder of the Lord his mercy to me I was coming back from Russia now stay with me friends there's people in this room you need to hear this a lot of you are so wide open to receive from God I could stop and pray with you right now you're ready but there's others you're still analyzing everything I love you brother I love you sister but I want to tell you, God is moving around this world right now. 
in a mighty way. You're listening to a man that lived through one of the greatest revivals of church history, and I'm saying this is greater than what I've seen. I was coming back from Russia last summer, and I opened up a Time magazine. And in Time magazine, there was a whole page, and it said this, Holy Spirit Falls in London. Dear Jesus, this isn't charisma. This is time. And I read it, went, wow, this is something. Next time I go to Russia, I'm going to go through London. I came back home, and I knew there were things going on in the world, okay? I knew about it. the Rodney Howard Brown meetings and the Benny Hinn meetings and all these folks. I knew about everything that was going on, friends. Listen to me. I had my own world, okay? I had my own world. Great ministry, when people would say. But more or less closed to anything that was outside of what I was comfortable with. You know, have you ever heard anybody say that you need to have balance, brother? Well, some of us, we have set the center of our balance, not God. Are you with me? We're the ones that have said, this is balance. And God's going, no, 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 no. Why don't you swing it back down to where your shadow is healing the sick? That is more, you know, people say they want the gifts of the early church. They're talking about the tongues and the prophecy. I say, well, what about Ananias and Sapphira? You know, what about the drop-dead theology? You know, lie to God and die. Where's that in your balance of things, you know? How many of us in this church would fall from our pews right now if God enacted that gift in the early church? And so where's your balance, brother? Where's your balance, sister? I'm confessing to you something right now. I was wrong. Well, I went to London in January of this year. I remember I was taking the ferry boat across the English Channel. And I was looking out the picture window of the ferry boat, and there was a rainbow over London, past the white cliffs of Dover. There was a rainbow, a beautiful rainbow, and I saw that and I thought, man, that's, that's gorgeous. And then over the PA system comes a song, Pastor, Amazing Grace. On a ship, on a ferry comes Amazing Grace. And I sat there and I looked at that rainbow and I listened to the music I went Jesus it was played by the way the amazing grace was being played by bagpipes I have never seen anything so heard anything so beautiful all my life fill the whole boat up with the glory of the Lord and I said God what do you have planned for me I arrived in London and we stayed at a bed and breakfast a dear Christian couple that had been friends with us for years Richard and Vivian elderly English couple got to their house and I asked them this question I said Vivian where's Holy Trinity Brompton where is the Holy Ghost moving where are the lines a mile long people trying to get into the church she said Stephen that's our church I said Vivian talk to me she said I've left a pile of literature on your desk table Steve upstairs I want you to read it. I went up, and this old boy right here cried for the next three hours. As I read testimony after testimony of the power of God hitting people, coming down, people being filled with the Holy Spirit, people being delivered from pro problems and habits, marriages being healed, incredible wonders of the Lord. And I did something that I rarely do. I just opened my Bible, just... You know how some of them would just, well, I'm going to just open it up and go like that, and there's going to be a promise there. I never do that. But I did that. How many have done that in desperation? Let's be honest. Look around, Pastor. That's how we get our guidance here. <laughs> Fell open to Acts chapter 18. And you don't have to read this. I'm going to just share it with you. Acts, the end of 18 and 19, is a story of Apollos, Priscilla and Aquila, 
confronting him about there's more of Jesus. Apollos was an incredible teacher. We have an incredible pastor. Some of you are incredible workers. You wanted Apollos, what he said. He was a, the Bible says he was mighty in the things of the Lord. You know what he said when Achilla and Priscilla said to him that there's more? He opened up his heart and said, I want it. I want it. And then the next paragraph, Paul says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? This was in Ephesus. They already had a thing going there. You want to know what they said? We didn't know that there was more. Talk to us. And I shut my Bible and I said, enough is enough. You have spoken to me. I cried and cried some more and I, then I went down. It was early in the morning and I told Vivian, I said, Vivian, call the pastor. I want him to, I want to talk to him. Now this man, I had no idea how popular he'd become. He was one of the most respected men in all of Europe. Stay with me, friends. This is important. He made an appointment for me at 3 o'clock that afternoon, the next day, which was phenomenal. He had a thousand people visiting from around the world that day. I walked into his church, which is right next to Herod's, if you've been to London, most, the ritziest area of the city. I walked into the church and stepped over 100 bodies trying to get to the pastor. Now, these are Englishmen. They don't do this. Now, I had been around falling to the ground before. All of us have. All of us have. Just because someone falls to the ground doesn't mean they're spiritual. But I had never seen the depth that was going on here. And I went across. I walked up to Sandy, the pastor. And I looked at him. I said, my name is Steve. He goes, oh, my. We have a three o'clock. He said, but look what happened. I said, Sandy, you don't need to talk with me. I said, pray for me. Lay your hands on me. Pray for me. I didn't tell him who I was. I didn't tell him what I'd done. You want to know what? That doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, friends. Some of us try to build up some type of little foundation before we talk to people. You're going to receive from the Lord this morning. It's going to be because you're hungry. It doesn't make any difference if you've shaken the world with the gospel. It's because you're hungry. Walked up to him and he laid his hands on my forehead. Now, I am remembering the wonders of the Lord, fathers. Some of you fathers today, you need this from your heavenly father. When he touched me, the power of God swept through my body. I fell to the ground. I don't ever do that, ever. For 20 minutes, rivers were flowing through me. A river, just a river. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, friends. I've seen everything a man can see in missions. I got up. 20 minutes later, transformed. I was brand new. I was brand new. Brand new. Now, I wasn't living in sin, friends, but little did I know how dry I was until God soaked me. I got up, and I want to tell you, you're talking about a 180 degree turn. I got up was like this. I was like a kid at Toys R Us. And I'm asking those of you that want prayer in this place, you get prayed for a dozen times. Get prayed for as much as you want. Some of you, God's going to hit you in a powerful way. I'm going to have you pray for me. I ran up to another couple and I went, pray for me. Pray for me. Suddenly, man, this, this is good. <laughs> this is good. They touched me. Wham! Out I went. Oh, dear Jesus. Laid there, got up, came back to the United States of America. My wife picked me up at the airport. I went, baby, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. She goes, honey, the Spirit of the Lord's always been on you. I went, no, 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 you don't understand, honey. The Spirit of God's on me. That Sunday morning, that, the next day, I said, honey, I want to pray for you. Now, my wife is as strong as a, a the strongest woman of God. She's incredible. She's an anointed intercessor. 
Nobody can pull the wool over my wife's eyes. She's strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Jerry came into my study. I said, I want to pray for you, baby. I said, I want to lay hands on you. She said, nothing's going to happen, Steve. I said, baby, nothing's got to happen. That's, that's the point. I just want to pray for you. I touched my wife. She said two words. Dear Jesus! And hit the ground. She looked like this, you know, with the baby sticking up in the air. And Oh, friends. My little Ryan comes in, Pastor. We got to spend time with this, friends, because I'm laying a foundation for these services. God is doing something fresh. He's doing something new. And if you're not careful, you're going to miss what the Lord is doing. Be careful. Be careful. You wouldn't believe how the Baptists are coming to our meetings. I am blown away. Catholics are coming out of the woodwork, friends. Methodists are eating it up. I'm going, where's the Pentecostals? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. We were born in this. I brought with me all the literature. And those, some of you have seen films and all of what's going on, but friends, I, I brought enough literature here to share with you. That our history is based on what you're going to see in this church today and tonight. My little boy Ryan, seven years of age. You know, you don't wonder if they're even saved at seven. You know, you're up and down, up and down. And he comes in. I said, Ryan, can I pray for you? He goes, yeah. He just stands there like this. I touched him. He went out. He went into a trance. He got up and was changed. His attitude changed. Did you know that suddenly he realized that there was power in the name of Jesus? <laughs> you know, it's like, don't mess with daddy's Jesus. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> now, we're going to pray in just a minute. But from that point on, the first church I went to was a church of 1,300 people. The Holy Ghost fell in that place. I asked how many people are hungry for a refreshing from the Lord. <laughs> Out of 1,300, 300 people came forward, and the other 1,000 were going to wait for them. The Holy Ghost fell. That was Super Bowl Sunday. The Holy Ghost fell, friends. People were immediately filled with the Holy Ghost, had been seeking Him for years. People were healed just like that. People that had been dealing with just an inner turmoil about something that took place in their life or, uh, you know, how we counsel all the time, friends. God was dealing with that issue in five minutes on the ground. Now in Argentina, we saw people fall by the thousands, but they would get back up. There are people in our meetings that go down, and while they're down, they have a visitation from the Lord. Boy, we're beginning to sound like New Testament. <laughs> we're beginning to sound like the church, Pastor. Visions and dreams and signs and wonders. Anybody with me? It's time. By the way, I've preached in some great churches across this land. Great Assembly of God churches. Our calendar is swamped from pastors calling and wanting meetings. They're going, I don't care what anybody's saying. This is God. This is God. This is the Lord because they know these people. The pastors know their flock. And they're saying, I have watched him. He, his marriage was about to fall apart six months ago. And now they are like lovebirds. This is Jesus. And it all happened at the altar one day when the power of God hit them. The wonders of the Lord. Well, I can remember the wonders of the Lord from just this last week, friends. I've seen so much. My heart is so full. How about you? This day, could this day be one of your, your landmarks to where you look back at this day and go, man, that was the day that my life took a pivot. Just I pivoted and went like I've never gone before. Some of you are so thirsty in this place. Some of us are passing through difficult times. I wrote these down this morning. Others are, are, are coming today with a deep hunger for more of his presence and power. Your appetite for a sovereign move of God is constantly becoming stronger. There's others in this room that are away from God. You don't know the Lord. But you're feeling in your spirit, it's time. It's time to get right. You're the one, first of all, that I want to pray with this morning. Now look at me. I'm a street evangelist in the United States of America. We do street meetings. We take churches like this and we go to the streets just like Richard's doing. We hold meetings in parks. And I am a confrontive evangelist. 
I am not one of those that says, okay, everybody shut their eyes and close, you know, and, and bow your heads. That's fine, but I don't do that. I speak in high schools, and I look at students straight in the eyes and say, you want Jesus Christ to change your life? Then push your buddy aside, push your girlfriend aside, and get up. If not, you'll never change. If you can't do it in public here, you'll never live it in private. And that's where most of our problems are, friends. Did you know that? I want to pray, first of all, for everyone in this room. Richard, if you would get the musicians and all together and the singers. I want everyone in this room, you're cold or away from God. You know you've drifted into a place where you're just in a, in a backslidden condition. Or perhaps you've never known the Lord. You're visiting today and you don't know Jesus. You've never accepted his atonement for your life. That means he has forgiven your sins. He has taken, he has taken upon himself the price for you. He has paid the price for what you've done wrong. And today you want to say, Jesus, I receive that. Jesus, I accept that. And I want to ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Up in the balcony, how about it? I don't know the Lord. How about on Father's Day, Father? Make a commitment. Look back on this day as a day that you took that, took that, that song I have decided to follow Jesus and made it your own. As we sing this chorus, just holy, holy, holy. Those of you that are away from God right now in this room, I want you to come join me right here. Don't look around. Don't wait on anybody else. Come join me right now. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life. I want the Lord to do a work in me right now. I want you to come right now. Holy, holy, holy. Get up right now and come. I want Jesus Christ to do a work in my life right now. Get up. Come on. I need Jesus. Get up. Come on. I need Jesus. You've drifted away from the Lord. Get up and come right now. You're away from God. Get up. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Come on right now. Young person, are you away from the Lord? Are you away from Jesus? I need the Lord. I need Jesus. I don't know him. I don't know the Lord. He's so distant to me. If he is distant to you, then make your way to the front and say, Jesus, I receive you right now as my best friend, the Lord and Savior of my life. Come on, friend. Come on, get up. Get up. Come on, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Come on. I need Jesus. Come on. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Get up. What are you waiting for? Get up. Get up. What are you waiting for? What does the Lord have to do? He's already done it on Calvary. Get up and say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. Come on. Come on. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Come on. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I'm going to make this call one more time, friends, because some of you, I'm going to tell you what's happening right here. The devil is saying to you, you will never be able to live for God. That's what you're hearing right now. I want you to tell you, he would not be saying to you, you'll never be able to live for God if he knew that that was true. He knows that you will be able to live for God. That's why he's lying to you, friend. That's why he's lying to you. If he's saying to you, I'll never be able to live for God, then just get up and say, I can, because Satan's telling me I can't. I know that I can. He's a liar and the father of all lies. Get up and come on down. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can live for the Lord. Come on, get up. Come on, right now. God's dealing with you. Get up and come. Sing that one more time through, Richard. Holy, holy, holy. Come on. This is for you, Father. This is for you, Father. Come on. Get up. 
Get up. I need the Lord. workers that can come down just one person join each one of you and lead that person to the cross lead them to the cross talk to them Let me explain something to the church. We are praying for revival. How many are praying for revival? This, this church is experiencing revival already. God is touching this church. But what we're going to experience today, friends, is a rain shower. Some of us may say it's a gully washer. Y'all know what that is? Now, we're going to be praying with you. I know a lot of folks are thinking about dinner today, Father's Day. Well, let me tell you, I took my wife out on Mother's Day. This is the worst time you can go to a restaurant. Worst time in the world right now. You want to go wait in line for an hour or wait in line here? I'd rather wait in line here and go there and just walk in. So here's what I'm saying. This morning, we're going to give an altar call. Now, these altars are going to be full. I'd like if they could move the 
the, the kneeling rails. Can those move? Yeah, they need to be moved. Thank you, gentlemen. Look this way. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Now, I'm going to be praying with every, I will pray all day and all night here. We will be praying with you. Some of you are going to experience the fire from heaven falling in your life. Others of you are going to be extremely jealous because that happened to you. I had one girl that the fire of God hit her so strong after waiting on the Lord. I prayed for her. She had waited for hours. God hit her so strong that people that got around her, just got close to her, were hit by the power of God. She's still being used mightily of the Lord now. And that was a month ago when that happened. She's totally transformed. Some of you are going to experience that. Others, we're going to pray for you, and you're going to lose all your bodily strength. People ask me, why do people fall down in your meetings? We've always seen that in meetings, Pastor, but nothing like this. Why do they fall down? And I, my basic answer is because they cannot stand up. Murray Kelly, you know who he is of Dothan First Assembly? Murray, if you're watching this broadcast, Murray stood just like this. He's taller than I am, bigger. Ain't nothing going to push Murray down, the pastor of First Assembly Dothan. Now, some folks I don't even get close to and the power of God hits them. Murray just stood there. If this is God, now he'd already seen it on all his deacons and all, but he just braced himself. He was open, but it had to be God. Touched his forehead. And he went straight down. He didn't figure on that. He figured he wasn't going to fall backwards. He went straight down. Why? Because every ounce of strength in his body left. And he had an experience with the Lord, friends. Some of us need an experience with the Lord. Amen. We need God to touch us. We need the Lord to come upon us. We need to have an experience with Jesus. Some of you need to experience the nearness of the Lord. Your dearness to Him. Are you with me? You need your Heavenly Father this morning to put His arm around you and just love on you, friend. And that's what He's going to do. Some of you are going to get up here and try so hard. You're going to be up here just trying to get. I'm going to come up to you and I'm going to tell you, relax, sister. Relax, brother. You're His bride. You're the apple of His eye. Here, receive this. And the Holy Ghost is going to come on you. And you're going to go, I don't deserve this. And I say, yes, you don't. Who does? Who does? But for the blood of Christ, friends, none of us deserve anything. Now, the Holy Ghost is going to hit some. You're going to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Do what you want to do. I was with Ted Satterfield in South Carolina, First Assembly of God, Charleston. The Holy Ghost hit a group of ladies. I've never seen anything like it ever in my life. They started, they went wild. A pastor knew all these ladies. This was God. His wife was one of them. That's okay, ladies. Enjoy the presence of the Lord. What good is all this? I'm going to tell you, friend, what good it is. People are falling head over heels in love with Jesus. Head over heels. I had one young man. Travis, you stay right here, buddy, because I want to pray with you. Stay with me, friend. I had one young man come forward right here in a service, watching. His eyes were as big as saucers, man. Never in his life had seen anything like this. And I walked up to him, I said, do you know the Lord? He goes, nope. Do you want to? Nope. Cold as ice. I said, can I pray with you? What's your name? He gave me his name. He goes, nope. I said, come on, let me just pray with you. And I took his hand. I said, Jesus, touch my friend. Then I let go. I said, that wasn't so bad, was it? He goes, no. I said, can I pray with you again? He goes, yeah. Prayed with him again. The power of God hit him, friends. He went down, got up 30 minutes later, and you want to know what he said to us? Jesus Christ has just come into my life. I will not be involved in drugs and alcohol anymore. I will not. My filthy mouth is going to be cleaned up. Jesus Christ just came into my life on the, on the carpet, friends. He testified in front of the whole church. The church went wild. 
They knew this kid. He was transformed by the power of God. Sweet Jesus. Now, those of you that have come forward, I want to pray with you. Just because someone falls to the ground does not make them spiritual. But I want to tell you, friends, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay? You may just stand there and receive. That's beautiful. No one's pushing anybody down. You may just stand there and receive. But there's an impartation going along. Some of you are not going to understand this. One lady was standing there. We're fixing to pray. One lady was standing right here. Prayed for her. She felt like river flowing through her. Went home and got on the telephone. Called her best friend 200 miles away. And said, Katie, something's happening in our church. This is revival. This is incredible. And she began to tell her what it was. And her friend said, I am so dry. She said, Katie, you can receive. And then the phone went, uh. She goes, Katie, Katie. Then her little boy got on the line. She said, Mommy's on the floor. <laughs> Mommy got hit by the Holy Ghost 200 miles away. What honor? And young people, listen to me. I want to pray for every young person in this room. Teenagers, I want to pray for you. God's going to anoint you. Some of you, you're in and out, in and out when it comes to school. You're struggling with this, struggling with that. Why can't we go past all that? God anoints you and you be used of God in miracles. Why can't God touch you and you be used of the Lord? How about praying for your friend that's got a headache at school? How about seeing miracles? That's what we're seeing. We're seeing miracles to the youth. The youth, every service, get in the river. I mean, they come in, friends, and just swim. So young people, do not let this pass you by. Now, we're going we're gonna to start praying for folks, and after this, I'm no longer responsible for what takes place in this meeting as far as I'm not going to officially close it. Okay, we're going to start praying for people. I want to encourage everyone that gets prayed for to get prayed for again and again. These altars are going to be full. We will pray for you all day long. God is going to work. How many want to be prayed for this morning? Some of us are. Everyone who would like a refreshing from the Lord, you'd like God to touch your life, I want you to come forward. Just stand right in here. Fill this whole area, friends. And I'd like for the musicians to play uh, The Name of the Lord is a Strong Tower. Y'all know that? And we're, I want to stay on this song for a while, okay, rather than moving because it's a song. We're going to stick with it because I don't want them to be singing other songs and changing. Let's just stay with this song, okay? Why don't you start it, Richard? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Now this is what we're doing this morning. We're running into the sheltering arms of the Lord. That's why we're singing this song. I told him not to change the song for a while. Just stay with this one song. We're running into the arms of Jesus. Now, if someone falls next to you, work with me, okay? Just work with me. If someone falls right in front of you, help them down to the ground. We don't have people that are hurt, by the way. If somebody falls on you, don't worry about it. There's a lot of folks here. Let's enjoy the presence of the Lord, friends. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong town. Go after the Lord now. Go after the Lord. Sweet Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be 
Let him melt you. Now, now, more, 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 now, 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 more, more, more. You're going to receive, sister. Now, 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 Jesus. More, 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 more. Now, Jesus. More, more, Lord. More, Lord. Flutter. Flutter. is there's a trickling going on. It's almost there's a river going by and some of us are doing this, like this. Stay with what the Lord is doing. We've had the Lord move like this just gently and then the power of God hits, friends. And I want to tell you, it is the most spectacular presence of the Lord. How many believe in the power of God? There's people already down here receiving from the Lord, receiving miracles from the Lord. Wait on the Lord right now. Go after the Lord. Lamb. 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 Jesus. Now. 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 Fire. 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 Now. Now, Jesus. Fire. 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 Jesus. Jesus.
right here in this section. Right here in this section. Right here in this. I want everyone right here to go after the Lord right now. Go after the Lord. Don't everybody over here run over here. Stay where you're at. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Richard, lead us in that. Glory to the name of the Lord. Now. Now. Now, more, more. 
Jesus. I'm so drunk I can't hardly speak. Jesus. Get in. I'm telling you this. Get in. In this place. Get in. I never felt like this in my whole life. I'm telling you. Hey, Pastor. I feel numb. Pastor. God, let the Lord. Pastor, some of you, if you had any idea what the Lord's about to do for you, just get back. I've had God hit people already in this place, thrown to the ground. They're in heaven right now. They are not in Pensacola. They're in heaven right now. Just stay open to the Lord. Don't leave. Don't leave. Oh, Jesus, sister. Sweet Jesus. Give her more, Lord. Give her more. Give her more. Give her more. Give her more. Now. 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 Now, Holy Ghost. Now. Now. More. 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 More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Now. Now, Jesus. Now, Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. Fire. 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 Now. More, Lord. Jennifer, you're going to receive from Jesus right now, Jennifer. Receive now. Now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus. Jesus. More. 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 Now. 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 Fire. 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 What's wrong? You feel something in your legs? Stand up straight. He's going to take all your strength from you. Now, 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 Jesus, now, Jesus, more Lord, more Lord, now, 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 Lord, now, Lord, Jesus, now, Jesus, now, Jesus, now, Jesus, now, 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 pray right in here. Don't leave. We've had the Lord pour out his Holy Ghost in mass. I'm talking about friends where he just came down in the meeting. Don't leave. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus.
Lord. My Lord. All right, now, 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 Jesus. More, more, more. Now, fire, 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 fire. Now, now, Jesus. Now, now, more, 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 now, more. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the name 
stay here as long as we're praying friends just go after the Lord you may be saying well what about me God's watching you sis God watching you brother you're gonna be touched you're gonna be touched. there's a lot of folks here I'm having the time of my life I'm having the time because people that are around me going do you know who that is do you know do you know what her problem was I like that statement do you know what her problem was <laughs> sweet Jesus Hallelujah. Sweet Jesus. You know some camp meeting songs? Soon and very soon we are going to see. Those of you in the back, work your way up through here. Come on. We are going to see the King. Jesus. And Jesus.
I want y'all to make room right here for all the little kids. Heather, come on up here, sis. Heather, come here. All the little children right here. The rest of y'all just stay in the presence of the Lord. Some of you have a touch from God coming. All the children I want right over here. Some of you are thinking the way this thing is going, I'm never going to get prayed for. Friends, let me tell you what I've seen happen. As the people wait on the Lord, as they wait on the Lord, there has been times where I have turned to a crowd and literally just walked through and everyone was just hit everywhere by the power of God because they waited on the Lord. Kids, I want you all right through here. You with me, Travis? It's Travis, right? What is your, what's your name? Eric. Where's Travis? Get over here, Travis. Where? Good. Hallelujah. Now, kids, I want you, all your children to look at me. Were y'all in children's church? Okay, I'm going to be praying for you, okay? Some of you are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit that aren't filled. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. One little girl who was eight years old, her parents brought her to me. I touched her. She went out to the ground. Her hands went up. She began speaking in tongues, and her mom and dad went bananas. I mean, they just, they were sitting there watching her fill with the Holy Ghost instantly. Others of you, I'm going to pray for you, you're going to lose. Okay? You're going to fall to the ground. Don't worry about it. You're going to love it. The Lord is touching your life. How many want Steve to pray for him? Come on. Come on down here. All the kids down here. And I want all the parents, you go after the Lord, okay? We may be doing this here, and he begins to fall right over there. Sweet Jesus. Kids, I want you to just think about Jesus right now. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Touch your Jesus. Musicians, go ahead and play, okay? Now. Now, Jesus. Now, Jesus. Now, Jesus. Now, Lord, what's your name? Jessica, you're going to receive from the Lord. Now, now, Jesus, now, Jesus. The earth is more, filled with more, your glory. more, 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 Lord, more, Lord. Now, Jesus, now, Jesus. Now, Jesus. 
like it when the crowd starts thinning out then the Lord starts coming down. <laughs> we were at one church, 2.30 in the afternoon. It's a church of about 900. 2.30 in the afternoon, there's only like 200 people left. And I told the church, I said, they, the last shall be first. About 2.30 in the afternoon, all heaven, I mean all heaven came down. Hallelujah. And that night, that night they shared with the rest of the congregation what happened at 2.30. Oh. God has just moved over here. Lord have mercy. I want to pray with every single person now. How many of you kids have been prayed for? Did God touch your life? Reconstructed his life. Sweet Jesus. Now, Lord, more. More, 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 Lord. More, Lord Jesus. Now, now, now. You do it, Jesus. You do it, Lord. You do it. You do it, Lord. More, more, Lord. More, Lord Jesus. More, Lord Jesus. More, Lord Jesus. Have you been prayed for? Fall on me. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Now, Lord, now, Lord, now, Lord.